obelisk is good because you can see an obelisk in Karnak, you can see one in America, you can uh -huh. see one in France. But why we are here, we are looking at an ancient quarry from where the Egyptians used to take the stones to build the pyramids, to make obelisks, to make altars, to make statues. So they used to come to Aswan because Aswan is famous with its great granite. So they used to choose a granite mountain like this one or a granite quarry like this one. And then they used to cut the stone here. They used to build a boat here. And during the flood season, the water used to come and carry the boat and then take it to Giza or to anywhere. So everything used to happen here in this place. From this area, Hatshepsut, 1500 BC, she took two obelisks. She cut two obelisks and a big statue for her from this quarry. Hmm. The last piece they were working on, it's over there. A crack happened to it. That's why we call it the unfinished obelisk. So they left it while they were working. They couldn't finish it because of the crack which happened to it. So that's why we call it the unfinished obelisk. But if they finished it, you have to know that it was going to be the biggest thing made by man during our ancient times. Mm -hmm. Nearly 42 meters in height and 1168 tons of granite as one block, one piece. We are going to look at it. Okay, so here's a question I have. So if they're building boats to put these things on yeah. and they're waiting for the flood season, how long does the flood season Four last? Months. Three months. Four. Four months. The Egyptians divided the year into three seasons. Mm -hmm. The first season was the flood for four months. And they used to know that the flood is coming according to a star. Uh -huh. As soon as they used to see the star, they used to say two more weeks and then the flood is coming. Okay, but how many pieces do they have ready that f for four months every day they're shipping out how many boats? No, they were working for eight months uh -huh. and they used to wait for the last four months to transport the stones. Huh. Do you get the idea? So they used to get the big tree trucks. Yeah. They used to tie them up all together. So many people used to push the stone to lie down on the on the on the boat, and then during the flood, the water used to carry it all the way to wherever they wanted to put it. Huh. And there it is. Yeah, it's lying down. I mean. Right away, I'm baffled as to how they were going to pick it up. So how they cut the stone from the beginning? The last story says that they used to make holes. In all the holes, they used to put a special wood, which is the sycamore wood. But why? Because as soon as you put water, and it cracks. it's going to expand and it's going to make a crack. Uh -huh. What about what is underneath? The same idea. Let's make holes and all the holes let's put the wood and then water will be making it expand and then we're going to have like like a free piece push it to lie down on the boat which we have here in this place and then the boat is going to take it they used to dig a channel a water channel so during the flood season the water used to have a chance to come all the way to here and then the water will be carrying it all the way to Luxor or to Giza but the crack and here you see the crack we go the crack happened while they were working. What a bad luck. What a bad luck. You know, Igor, if you're asking for how long you used to cut and you used to make an obelisk, we have a smaller one at Karnak came from here, from this place, belongs to Hatshepsut as well. This one is 1168 tons. The other one is 332 tons. Hatshepsut on the other one, she's saying it took seven months to cut the stone here to transport it, to take it all the way to Luxor, to erect it in Luxor. Seven months. So this, this, this is would be a four year project. Maybe something like this. So imagine you that you are one of the workers after working hard here in July or August. Oh my God, about the, the, the heat. And then while you were working, the crack happened. The crack happened. What a bad luck. Right. So the guys that work here hard and hard and hard. And then this what happened. The crack happened to it like till 1800 or 1900 some guys they wanted to take the stone for building few other things so they decided cutting the cracky parts right right but the crack kept going so they decided cutting the other bad parts but the worker said no 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 the crack is not just what we are looking at 
the crack is every and everywhere yeah. it's underneath it's every and everywhere can you see those paintings mm -hmm. the geese and the ducks mm -hmm. we have the names of Tutmosi the third when the workers of Tutmosi the third came to this place they said oh my god it's uh, the, the place is full of cracks so we're going to wait and for an order from our king to move to a different quarry so they kept they stayed here for a while to get an order and they did go to like a different place for finding better granite but you have to know that this quarry after Hatshepsut became a news they couldn't take a big piece like this one but they used to take the little pieces mm -hmm. for making small obelisks statues like you can take a small piece but you cannot take a huge one like this one because make sure that you will be finding a crack mm -hmm. but if you need like a small piece for making any statue just come and use it so it was open not just for Hatshepsut even after Hatshepsut herself and if you are asking why the Egyptians used to make the obelisks they used to put it outside the temple so the king used to have his, his life on the obelisk I'm the son of Ra, I'm the king of upper and lower he talks about himself but if you look at the obelisk it does have a pyramidical top mm -hmm. why there is a pyramidical top because they used to cover the pyramidical top with electrum 80 percent gold and 20 percent silver gold and silver in the early morning what's going to happen it's going to shine and exactly reflect. so they are going to tell you that Ra he is praying now mm. the sun god because nobody lived in any ancient temple with the sunrise they used to open the doors so they were all outside the temple looking at the obelisk as soon as they used to see the reflection oh Ra now is in the temple so let's open the doors and let's start the praying wow. so here is the obelisk my friend which we look at you have to know that from the, the, the hammers which they were using which is this one they used them in a wrong way not in a special uh, way like the rest of the, the other guys You're barely doing anything to it. No, I made like a little hole. <laughs> yeah, you made a little. You didn't make that. <laughs> I mean, that to that is. <laughs> Do you want to try? Give it to yeah. me. Yeah. Give me the camera, and then you can try. Nice. I mean, yeah, I'm making a hole, but how do you make the turn? How do you make the perfect smooth way? Yeah. This how is another you... thing. How to make it smooth? Get wood and put the wood next to your granite and then burn your wood. Granite will be hot. Put fresh water from the night. So unfortunately my GoPro has a full memory card and I didn't bring any more. But I'm hard to press to believe that with those diorite pounders they were able to work in such a tight space. I mean just look. I don't know if the shadow's too space how do you work in such a tight confined area like cracking the stone putting wood in there pouring water cracking it more I mean come on look at the grooves something's fishy here the traditional story doesn't hold water yeah, we hate this king, but don't forget that he is the son of God, and maybe Ra will be not happy. Right. So it's 41.75 meters tall, almost 42 meters, and 1120 something tons, I think. It be the biggest structure ever made by man until it broke in the ancient time. And they were gonna get it to go down there, but they'd have to cut all that out right there and all this out so that it could fit because it's gonna run into here. They have to cut all the way from here out and then cut all the way from there out and then somehow get it down into a boat and cruise it down during the flood season. I mean, that's just insanity. Huh? They used to pull and push to lie down on the mountain like this. They used to get rid of some sand with ropes they were pulling, so it used to be like this and then like this. But they were building like a wall 
just in case if it's leaning. Huh. So this is an easy thing how to stand it up. Really? Yeah. And they wouldn't be afraid of cracking it? No, house. No. No. It's granite. It's very solid granite. It is the hardest rock ever we have. But the weakest point's gonna be in the middle. In the middle? Right? Doesn't matter because look at, at how how thick, how how, how big it, the obelisk itself. Right. So they were pulling with ropes. During the same time there was a wall will be standing up just in case if, if it's leaning. How many people pulling with ropes? Ah, so many ones. How many people died under the ropes if the ropes like, like right. uh, something happened? So many things happened. Huh. But we don't have like any book to tell us what happened. Right. So what's interesting about this series, I'm seeing two types of lines. I'm seeing horizontal lines and we obviously have the vertical cuts. And, uh, you know, granted it's all rough work still, I'm still pretty fascinated by the ability to, to do this. This is, this is the second obelisk, that's what this is. This is the other little one. There's your pounder. Like that's gonna work. Now who's gonna be the unlucky guy to make the final cuts? I hope the thing doesn't kill you. Yeah, I'm coming! <laughs> 